All right, we're back with round number three of our RCQ here. And we have, again, Demir Frog Tank piloted by Andy Hoon. Yeah. And then we have Maxfield Walters on Boros Energy. So we get to see the matchup that Murktai calls impossible. So uh, this is a classic MH3 matchup between uh, two, uh, basically, breakout deck from MH3 is uh, Murktai and Energy. And we have a ton of energy deck in the room today. Yeah, we have a lot of energy. Actually, I'll start counting up when we while we're doing while we're waiting for the game to start. Actually, yeah. So players are still trying to figure out their mulligans. But let me let me count the amount of energy we have in this in this room. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine energy players. Nine oh, out of twenty-four. Nine out of twenty-four is quite the, the that's amount. That's uh, twenty-five percent. Yeah, of the room. Yeah, man, that's a uh, a lot of energy in the room. And this matchup, like you said, uh, very very difficult for Mark Ty. Yeah, because what happens is Boros actually becomes the control deck in this matchup here. Actually, we actually already in the game, so. But yeah, Boros becomes the energy in this. So Boros energy becomes the control deck in this matchup here, where they're actually not obligated to do much in this game. Is actually all mainly on the frog tide to figure out how to win. Yeah. So basically, energy can just for uh, just just don't play out the hand. Uh, get get a couple of threat going and just wait. Cause like if you don't do anything, what's the counter spell gonna do? Nothing. And if they play one threat at a time, like you actually have a really good density of removal between uh, Galvanic Discharges, uh, some versions still on a couple of Lightning Bolts, um, your, you have Static Prison, Flages, like you actually pack a ton of removal. Yeah, so it looks like we had a very long debate there with the Undersea Service of We are going to keep it on the top and just fast and go, leave up against Patterson Mana and also as well Bowmasters as well. So we're going to have a fetch here come out from Max Walters to see if we get, get the sewer roll in or are we going to start fetching for those basics early because we might be, need to play around hard with the seas or even better, play around our own Blood Moon. We're actually just going to get the Elegant Parlor instead and start surveilling. Uh, I, I think if you see uh, your Murtai opponent go surveil land verge, um, then you probably safe to assume that there's no uh, harbinger of the sea in the in the near future. I think you also kind of want to. So th this is really funny. This matchup, both of them have blood moon effects, and both are pretty devastating against the other deck. Yeah, and also as well, so it looks like from the survey, we did bin a Marsh Flats here. It looks like we got a lot of lands in hand. We're going to get the Aether Hub there. We're going to float in energy. So we have one energy floating. So I just start banking energy here, and here's the first threat. And uh, John, we have a counter spell. Yep. We have so, actually a spell snare come out, which is pretty nice. Yep. One man, Trade one mana for two mana. Oh, I think Andy's hand is just all counter Oops, spell. all counter spell. Oh it's my god. Actually, just oops, all counter spell. That. Oh, and a psychic frog coming out. So let's see how Max want to deal with this uh, psychic frog here. We do see that he got a static prison in hand. I think mean, it's just going to come out, but I don't know if Andy want to force a negation this. Yeah, so we're yeah, going to... Yeah, just immediately force a negation it. So we are going to have the Psychic Frog stick out for a while here. We also have Bolt and... Well, we actually have Bolt and Flagian Hand. So do, did you Bolt the Frog here? If, if, if you were Max, like would, would you Bolt the Frog here? Because Andy just pitched... For force and negation, I think I have like three cards in hand. Yeah, I think we have three in hand. I'm not too sure exactly. Judge walking on over, mentioning the energy token. Yeah, so if you can line up discharge plus plus bolt, you can answer this frog. But just getting a plane to play around harbinger of the sea here. 
So we are going to have the energy on the camera here, just to, you know, so we can represent. Well, Max is still going to write everything down. We just want to represent on camera here how much energy is actually does Max have? Because energy actually matters quite a bit, especially on the Burrows deck. Yeah, and it does matter for stuff like Static Prison, uh, Guide of Souls, like pumping up your guys. But made out of the count as well, and now a Johnny will resolve. Yeah, so we have a second Johnny coming here. We don't have an answer to this, sadly. So we can get a nice little two-one cat alongside our, our our friend over here. So the the thing about the Johnny here is it price Andy into not attacking with the frog, because you don't you really don't want to attack into the the cat token and just giving a Johnny a a free flip. Yeah, I mean the. I mean, we do have the bowling hinge also for Max as well, so we can probably just swing in, do some free damage as well, and then also just bolt our own the Johnny, or sorry, bolt our own cat token after their combat to effectively flip it and wait for our red source to come as well. And I, be I believe Andy drew a go for the throat though. Ooh. So would you sh drop shield, uh, go shields down here and go for the throat the Johnny? So now, here's come the block to try and flip a Johnny. Wait, oh, if we do push here or go for the throw, we can... Oh, oh we actually, have a fatal push as well, so... Oh, actually, oh yeah, because Max is tapped out, so we actually can't do much at all here. But now we're in a sick situation where we're going to probably discard that, go for the throw, make sure it is big enough to make, to not die. And now, Andy's shields down. So Andy is now shields down. Well, one mana, one blow up, it still represents quite a bit, even though we know he shields down, but it is... But Max obviously does not know that, so it'll be very hard for Max to play some stuff here. But we're actually going to play out the Flage, the amazing new... Everyone says it's so, better than Yorion. You, you mean Uro? I'm sorry, yeah. Uro, I mean, Uro, Yorion, I think the Flage is probably better than both of them, honestly. Yeah. So, the Uro pair with Lightning Bolt will kill the frog here. Uro. And, <laughs> oh, see... Uh, now, now I've got I got messed up by you. <laughs> <laughs> the flage. Yeah, but flage paired with lightning bolt will kill the psychic frog, and now Andy just now empty-handed, no land drop, just kind of stuck. Well, you're not empty-handed, but you're you still have two, so we're actually oh. gonna play out the merc time. Oh, we did have we're, a merc time. We're not even close to empty-handed here. <laughs> uh, I think last card in hand is a force of negation, which uh, currently does nothing. Yeah, but oh, it's double bolt here for Max or Walter. We're gonna play the four here, play out the Wandering. Now we're yeah. all to, we're definitely shields down now if we're playing the Wandering. Well, sorry, I mean, on hand since Andy's shields down, we are gonna play the Wandering. My bad. Yeah. So get the one ring through. This will pull Max like really ahead. I believe that was a blue card to pair with his Force of Negation. Yes. Sorry. We need the well, we needed the blue card to pair, but we did play out the Mark Tide. So now we're going to get some free value here with the One Ring. Man, this card's pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean, one of my favorite pro player, uh, Andrea Mangucci, said, if you cast One Ring on 20 life, you win the game, right? Yeah, I mean, even, you can even cast it on 3 life and still win the game, too. Yeah, so uh, this card's pretty strong. Uh, already drew 3, but doesn't seem like there's much answers to this Merc tie. I mean, yeah, but also as well, we are going to be able to refill what we lost because of the One Ring. That is true. Uh, so I think just Max here right now, just trying to look to see if he can uh, find like a static prison for this Merc tie. Maybe bring back the Flage to buffer his life total and start to threaten um, a, an actual clock. Because actually, like, Flage is a bit faster clock than Merc tie. Yeah, so thank you, Andy. That's what I was saying. I couldn't tell how many counters that was, but that is going to be an 8 8 Murktide on Andy's side here, which is pretty significant. But now we're going to escape the flage here, exiling five cards. Make sure we exile the first five first before we have any responses. And hopefully, this flage is enough to negate the life loss from the Murktide and the Wondering. I'm, I'm surprised Max kept uh, a lot of spells in his graveyard. I would just throw away the spells to play around Surgical, but I guess he. Uh, He's not too concerned about surgical in uh in a pre pre board game. I mean yeah, so we're gonna play out the Ocelot Pride, which is what makes this deck very, very good alongside many of the many good one drops like Guy the Souls in also Amp Raptor. This this card just can take over the game out of nowhere if left unchecked. Yeah, and pair pair with this uh Flash, you can guarantee a life gain trigger every single turn. 
Well, so, that's not. Well, I think it's Guy the Souls, right? No, no, no. With the flash too. You can just attack oh, yeah. with the flash and lightning hit your opponent. Yeah. So every time, but the, also Andy does have a big blocker though of an eight eight Murktide. I mean, would you would you trade the Murktide for the flash here? It's like you can attack with the flash. Helix the Murktide, right? Yeah, you can get those Murktide, then you trade with it. Which, you do get rid of the Flacher, but now you have to deal with also Pride and the cat tokens it does produce. Which, I think Andy would be kind of happy, because you are stuck on the two lands here. You did play your big creature, and Max doesn't seem like he can be close to escaping in the next two or three turns. Yeah, but, but the thing is, like, if you trade the Murktai with the Flage, you're not attacking. Well, yeah, so you, he didn't attack. Yeah, we're not going to attack anyway, so we are. We need to trade with this flake. If you don't trade the flake here, you are you just very much. Die, you are right? in a yeah. losing position, so it's like the best. It's like the it's not the best outcome you want to have, but it's the only outcome you have. I, I, it's it's the only play you you have when you're stuck on two lands with like two cards in hand. But like Mac is just so far ahead with this one ring. Yeah. One ring, being able to replenish the hand, gave that protection for a turn to negate the Murktide oh, swing. But not now the we Goblin have Bombardment, go too. The Goblin Bombardment. Now, this would be very rough to play this game, but we're actually going no. so, force to force the pitch. Yeah, force to force the negation here. Um, don't really want this Goblin Bombardment to hit the field. You just kind of die in a couple of turns if it does. Oh, oh, Oops. those are great draws from Max. So that's a Arena Glory Gaia Souls. I didn't see the other one, but Arena, it's sorry, Gaia Souls is what you want to see if you're drawing right now because now you have so much life gain here and also even eventually give the Flage flying. It's, yeah, so Max is going to make the play that I talked about here where he's going to Lightning Helix the Merc Tie and see if Andy want to trade. Andy, I think Andy is priced into trading the Merc Tie away. And the thing is, with the arena of glory in hand, in a couple of turns, the flay just come back. Oh yeah, we also have a fetch lane. Yeah, we have a fetch lane as well, so I can play out like Guy the Souls now. I think this card is probably the best one drop over Ocelot Pride in the format. Oh, oh. A double guy. Oh, Ocelot Pride. Oh no. Oh no. Someone get out the calculator. It's time to bring out the math equation for this one. So I think the second Ocelot Pride give Max City Blessing. Yes. So now, and on the end step, Max will, I believe, mate. Two cat, and then the first also of pride made two more cats, and the second also of pride made eight more cats. We also, can't forget all the guy souls triggers as well. We're also going to play out the Ragger Man as well. Might as well trigger that. So we have we're at 22, we have two energy now. Oh, oh no, making six cats. I, I don't think Andy have uh I think this game's pretty much I over. think I think this is over, but I don't think Andy have Toxic Deluge in the main. With one card in hand, it has to be Toxic Deluge plus Lion. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if Andy plays Toxic Deluge main board though. That's the question. <laughs> and a Ragavan on top of it. Just for fun. I mean so <laughs> we have a lot we have six we have seven one one cats. Seven one one two yes. also on pride. <laughs> yeah, this here. is over. Yeah, this is more than over here. Wow, Boros, Boros energy Gross. showing what it does best, and you know, playing the one ring, being able to recover, and then win the game very very hard because Andy was also just stuck in the two lands. Castle play out the mark tight and can't do anything else after that. Yeah, and and he he just kind of put a lot of his eggs into the 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 frog basket and the frog just didn't accomplish anything like he he, he spent a card plus force negation to protect the frog and the frog the frog just ended up getting blocked and then removed so he didn't get any didn't recover any card from the frog and just fall super behind yeah well Fun, oh, fun fact about Max Walters, if you ever do browse r slash modern magic f f on reddit and you saw a Reddit post about the Ocelot Pride and the math equation for cats. That was all done by Max Walters himself. And I saw that it had a pretty great good amount of votes. So if you ever if anyone refers to the Ocelot Pride math equation that involves the cats and everything else, Max Walters here is the one who posted that, which is pretty impressive. I mean, we would have a lot of like very impressive players at, at card art. Uh, like Max is one of the first people uh, that is actually like on the Boros Energy deck before during Naru meta. He was on. He was on it 
before it became like a thing on goldfish yeah i saw the combinations like this is sick i will play it and then people other people more people started playing yeah you know, i guess you say he's one of the first pioneers of the deck yeah that, that's for sure like i he's been playing some variation of and uh of boros or mardu energy for the longest time that i can remember and andy here is also a pretty well-known like blue black control blue black tempo player in in the area as well yeah any deck that is that is blue black you will see andy on it he was on the demir death shadow demir merc died now demir control, demir was, control one ring and demir pop unfortunately has not played demir mill yet which is makes me kind of sad because that <laughs> is a demir pile he is allowed to play but yeah andy here is a play match for a pretty long time now and does very well on just any demir pile yeah and you can see he even got a demir tattoo okay yeah he has a demir tattoo on him and also we have the match we have the dark blue sleeves for demir yeah, he for got, the <laughs> he's really into the uh demir aesthetic so some some where's the demir syndicate they, they, so he should it. be recruited yeah so i'm just recruiting the demir syndicate because this guy is a hardcore demir, demir fan <laughs> Yeah, but, but like, uh, so for sideboarding, uh, what do you, what do you think Andy can bring in for to shore up this match? Like this really tough matchup. Well, obviously you're gonna, probably gonna bring in the hardware of the seas most likely. Uh, Bowmasters is actually very important in this match as well because Bowmasters can start pinging down our slot pride and some with the one on, and it also is a great blocker as well if needed. And the most important thing it kills ocelot pride that is the most important thing there i think you're also gonna bring in the you toxic delusions as well and there's actually debate to bring in a surgical if you want to if you have enough to take out but i don't think that it's gonna come in at all yeah so a andy is full on the uh i'm gonna remove all your creature uh game plan i don't think the counter spell game plan is re re very good against uh energy because the uh, energy just have the ability to multi-spell so you, you they, like you see Max did game one where he used I think like some removal spell to bait out the counter spell and then resolve in a Johnny. That, that was pretty. That's like the quintessential like gameplay of energy. Yeah, and as for Max side, I'm pretty sure you're probably gonna bring in more stag prisons, maybe some more of the blood moons as well. But I think the most important thing, if he is on the four one ring plan, you're most likely only playing three main and one side. So maybe the fourth one does come in here just in case to sure it up a little bit more. Yeah, speaking of blood moon, the uh, the interaction between blood moon and harbinger of the sea is very interesting. Yeah, timestamp. <laughs> yeah, so you you might think whoever land the first uh, blood moon effect will have a an advantage but one basic land can change that well i will say that it, it should be a lot harder for uh andy to even have the harmony even stick in the first place because the amount of removal max has as well if you just face if max just fetches basic mountain it's gonna be really hard for that harbor to stick in general yeah just go back and discharge yeah because unfortunately it's not like you're playing a merfolk deck where you can play spending seas tight sheep you cut them off the basic and then you sh you only play the harbor after you show up the bases are all gone so, I think Harbor is actually probably not that amazing in the front tide deck in this matchup. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think you want to keep too many counter magic here. I think your spell snare is important, but like the stuff like spell pierce got to go, force of negation probably got to go. Like you might even cut down on some amount of counter spell because like two mana ca uh, counter spell against one drop creature is very clunky. Yeah, so it looks like Andy is going down the 6 here while Max is keeping a, hopefully a strong 7, if you're pretty confident that. I see at the very bottom of our screen here in the in the player kit, in the board, we still have the City Blessing on the board there. <laughs> yeah, he does not have the, no, there's no City Blessing anymore, oh, it's just a Gantha. Gantha. My bad. I see two cards here. I was, I was so used to not seeing the energy token there because we didn't have much. But we're going to shock in a Sacred Founding and play out a Ragavan. Uh... Previously, the best one drop in modern. That was okay. That was just okay. Uh, Bowmaster really uh, put a damn on on Ragavan Reign of Terror. Uh, but before uh, Bowmaster exists, you just see this monkey everywhere. Yeah, the Ragavan was pretty good here, but anything here gonna turn one fetch for the under city sewer, and hopefully we don't have needed to bait much, and hopefully just a land on the top there to 
hopefully bend away unless he actually needs to land. But turn Ragavan, probably the best start you can have for Max here because that card is not amazing after turn number one. Yeah, and I, uh, Andy can have a pretty simple answer to, to this Ragavan. Just land uh, Bowmaster is pretty strong against uh, turn one monkey. So you want to serve out here. It looks like we have countless pole in the hand, so we're gonna bring a cling that does, which is a pretty good value there. We actually speak of the bow master if we oh, did we drop to it. it off the top. But would I would you save the uh, the bow master for something like also a pry? I think and you have to answer the bow master here because uh, Max will have to swing with it no matter what. You have played the bow masters, and then you can still answer the onslaught pry otherwise. Yeah. So. Just answer the, the Ragavan here. Uh, make sure it doesn't get any extra value. Still very strong card if it hits you. Yeah, so looks like we might be stripped on mana here with the trail. I don't think so, because we're going to play basic planes now and play out that Ocelot Pride. That here comes the Ocelot before. Pride. So Ocelot Pride, I mean, I mean, you would definitely play on turn two, but unfortunately it's still only a 1 1. So we are finally actually going to play the, oh, the second Bowmaster. Now that. Now that's how you beat energy. Just oops all removal. Yeah, I mean, you are playing the Demir deck that has all the removal to it. I guess toolbox you can say. Cause that's one way for this deck to really be able to do something, because if Andy can't deal what's even on the board, you don't really have a chance in this game at all. Yeah, so uh I I think Max off a one ring in hand, but we know Andy have a counter spell. Oh. So I don't know how he would be able to get this uh, one ring through. I think one ring would. One ring is the thing that really break this matchup for me. Um, an aggro deck that being able to dump their hand and the and refill with a turn of safety is like just so disgusting. Well, it looks like the XP in Andy's hand here, but also the way we're fetching. We're not really respecting Blood Moon or even Hard Moon this season at this point. No, nobody cares. Nobody cares. So we're going to swing in with the Orc Army, go down to 14 on Max's side. And we have double counter spell here, I think, and an extra pay. Yeah, I, I think extra pay is important uh, for, for Flage. Uh, you really don't want the Flage to be able to come back. Or uh, if I Max put something like an Ajani into the graveyard, that's also a really good surgical target. Oh, also, I see a Toxic Deluge here for India as well. India's pretty well positioned to deal with even on board and off the board. But yeah, I think extra pretty thing you were most likely want to do actually on the... Yeah, on the Johnny because... Flinch kind of is a little bit fake in the matchup. Like, it, it exists, but also it's like not the main win con. It's not something you really need to worry about as much, especially with the amount of removal you have. But we're going to bin the Elgin Parlor from the Elgin Parlor Surveil here. So, on this draw step, would you extirpate the Ocelot Pride? Ooh, that's a rough one. I honestly don't think I would. I, I mean, it, it is a good target. I think because Andy has the Toxic Deluge, there's no point. I see. That is a good point. So, we got energy coming from the Aether up here, which is always nice, but there's no pass and go here on Max's side. Uh, I think I put money on that, too. Oh, just a preordain here. Looking at a couple cards. Looks like A. Consign the memory and. Well, oh, just decide to bottom both. Well, I mean, because that memory is really interesting in this matchup because you do get some triggers, but I don't think it's amazing at all. But uh, I think mainly for the one ring. Yeah, it's just for the one ring. That's it. But, oh, Celestial Purge comes out. Oh, goodbye, Bowmaster. Celestial Purge is a very fun card, you can say. Since that uh, one is textless versus show at all, is this excellent target black or red permanent? Yeah, so th this card came up uh, quite a bit post Amy Street with all these uh, black and red cards like Flage, like Psychic Frog. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. let's say, like, the Wondering shouldn't have been stuck there because I'm pretty sure that got kind of spelled there, but. <laughs> I, I think Andy just put the yeah. counter spell into his graveyard, so Max might have missed it. Oh, I think Max, it's fine. It's fine. Now we're going to Psycho Frog here. Go down to 14. Wow, we're actually. Wow, we're so far ahead of any Psychos. Now we're going to. Play a Ragavan? Uh, trigger also trigger got us all here. Go Gain a life. Get an energy. Yeah, wow, Max is kind of behind now. Wow, this is a sign of weakness here for Max, because <laughs> also behind together is not what you want to see. Yeah, Max is running out of gas after that uh that one ring got countered. 
And Andy here with the frog will be able to refuel and just like get super ahead. Man, Andy frog? could. Oh, a Murktai. Yeah. Oh, this is be interesting sequencing here. So let's see how Andy's going to sequence this because we also have the frog out. We also have counter spell. We also can just play Murktai for like basically zero. I mean, you just play out the Murktai here for for whatever the biggest Murktai is. I don't think he's going to play out the biggest Murktai. I think he is. We're debating on this one, so I think we actually are. Since yeah, so we, we got the biggest mark tie it could be. And this could threaten lethal in a couple of turn, Maybe even next turn. Consider max uh, is at 10. And one card in hand. And this is the one card in hand is Gigantha. Yeah, so go down to 8 here. So the so if, if Andy is willing to just discard his hand? I think that... Oh, okay, that's what I was say. I think oh, yeah. Max drew the one ring there, but unfortunately, he knows counter spells there. This play of the Giganta, five check it <laughs> a little bit. But now we're going to game number three here, where Andy on the play having oops all removal. While Max basically had some of the best starting hands you can have in the deck, is just unfortunately nothing can stick. Yeah, I mean that that's how you that's how you have to do to beat this uh, Boros Energy deck. You just have to answer all their threats. Run them out of resources, and and then you can turn the corner. And yeah, that's exactly what Andy did. Just run him out of resources. So, don't look like doesn't look like there are any changes in this cyber plan. Um, the matchup is pretty well known. Not a lot of play draw differences uh, on this. So, just gonna shuffle back and uh, and run it back, but. I'm very curious, does Andy, e I think Andy probably just did not even bring Harvey Seas in the first place as well. Like, I think that's a very I, good possibility. I, both player might have cited out their, their Blood Moon effects. Yeah, I, I definitely see that for sure, but I can't be too certain. But Andy, in that game number two, had probably the best hand you can have in that ma in this matchup. De definitely, like Andy hand lineup super well against max sequencing uh being able to answer a turn one uh ragavan into a answer a turn two also i'll probably exactly what you want yeah and the stakes of this match is pretty high here because basically this is your winning in for top eight especially because we're just only playing five rounds yeah so 24 player five round if you're three and oh you're in yeah so, you're three, oh, two. so this is your winning in and let's see so we're just going to so have a pre game coming out from Andy here. It looks like it was a bottom bottom into a draw. While Max is going to fetch with his Marsh Flats here. And just well, grabbing a Surveil Land, I think. I think it would just be a Surveil Land for sure. That uh, looks like in Andy's hand, that's a lot of lands I see. And also a Murderous Cut, I think, as well. Uh, Murderous Cut won't be online for a while. Yeah, I tr it could be... What's that one Black Remover spell from Dustmourne where you exile three cards instead to cast it? Or... Alongside of it, I forgot it's called. Yeah, the the new one mana black room final final something final something. Yeah, but we're gonna surveil here. It looks like a bolt in the hand here, an amp raptor for Max Walter. We're gonna draw the card that we surveilled. I think it's another amp raptor. No, no, it's a look arena like a glory. Look like a lamp. so a Johnny's gonna come out here. A Johnny, so, very cool. Yeah, so preordained turn one means no spell snare. So a Johnny will safely resolve, but. Does it stay on the field? Uh, Bowmaster does not answer a Johnny, actually. Yeah, Bowmaster does not answer a Johnny here. It's actually not the worst card they're going to. Also, uh, for the folks at home, that Gigantha is not on the battlefield here. That Gigantha is a companion right now, so don't be a little bit confused with that. It's Kai, what a steal, Kai. What did you do, man? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> the chat's going a little bit crazy here. But, so we're going to fetch the uh, Preordain, I think we top bottom, and then we pay attention for a moment there, we can play the Blue Delta and pass. Now, I think, is he, what is he holding up? I think Andy doesn't have anything, it, gets, it, could be, it could be like all these lands and nothing, I can't really tell, but let's focus what's happening on the board right now, so we're going to have Flats fetched out for, Ant, for our Max Walters, going down to 18, most likely going to grab a basic plains or mountain here most likely the plains actually you'll have an elegant par parlor 
Oh, it's just another surveil line. No. Elegant Parlor is pretty... This is, I think this is Sorcery Speed as well. Yeah, Sorcery Speed, Elegant Parlor. So... Are you just going to play out that I think we're Raptor, I guess? I yeah. think we're for sure. Because, like, we, we want to see the card on top, and if we see if we oh, want yeah. to Amraptor it. Definitely been that. Yeah. Now, let's, let's get ready for this Amraptor, because I think it will probably most likely say for Amraptor, I think is probably, in my opinion, the strongest, one of the strongest cards in the deck, because they can get a card oh. for free, get two energy. We have a Bolt now. See, see, we want to spend that energy on the Lightning Bolt. Probably will. No, it's hard to say because I think we're just gonna actually, yeah, we're only gonna spend it. We're gonna go down to seventeen here for Andy. Because like we, we don't have an energy payoff right now, so just spending that one energy for three damage seems pretty good to me. Uh, Andy, once again, uh, fetch. We're down to 13 after that attack, too, so... Yeah. We're almost in Flage Range, because 12 life, you're in the Flage Range of Death. And I think Max have another Ooh, Lightning Bolt hand. That's Stag Prison with another Bolt? Yeah. And then also Wondering? And also, I think, Arena Glory? I think you're pretty well positioned here. Yeah, Ma Max just kind of running away with the game a little bit. And you need, like, land plus Toxic Deluge. You need the land. Well, we definitely have the lands here. We just need that, but we need the Toxic Deluge here right now. Just to clear up the board and delay for a little bit. It's debating really hard about that card. We oh, so I think it's a Fatal Push. Yeah, so we drew that Fatal Push. Okay, so Fatal Push pair with this Bowmaster can clear out the whole board. Here. Yeah. You have to push... Johnny, Johnny now first. because yep. we are tapped out on max sense. We can't do any funny tricks, but we just want to pass go and leave up potential bow. Yeah, we're gonna leave with the bowmasters. Yeah, so if, if max attacked, you just bowmaster the M Raptor and block the, the cat warrior. Yeah, so but also as well, there is the wandering in the hand, also a flay. Oh, we drew into a flage here. Oh, flage plus lightning bolt is like lethal, lethal. Let's see, but it doesn't look, we don't have the fourth land now, I'm pretty sure. Unless I was right about the Arena Glory. No, no, we have yeah. a, a Arena So glory. we do have the Arena Glory off the surveil from around, from the turn number one. Now we're going to go sideways, wait until Andy does something, go down to 12. So Most down to 12. Most likely get a basic island here, or basic uh, swamp, and then just play out the Bowmasters and do the ping on the Raptor, then... Yeah, block the... Uh, block the cat. I, I think you lightning... I don't think you care. I think you lightning bolt the the face here, and then uh, flash the uh, the bowmaster. So you lightning bolt fl uh, face, flash bowmaster, and next turn you get to flash with haze. Ooh, Max, nice you screwed up here. It's pretty interesting. Oh, so d did he want to lightning bolt the? Did he want to line? Oh, he had, he, he had to lightning bolt before block. Yes. We had the bolt before block. So now we're going to play up the flay chair. We're going to go to 21 on Max's end. Which, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you def, he definitely want to do that because get that extra two damage, man. It's a lot. Yeah. So you could have got the two damage through or removed the uh, the bowmaster without using flage. We can end step bolt here. And yeah, we, we just answer both face. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Wait, what card is that? Yeah, I actually don't know what that card is. I think it's like some cyborg attack. What is that card? Oh. So we're going to bolt end step here. So bolt in both face on the end step. Go down the knife. Oh, for Rexian Crusader. Rexian Crusader. What does this card do? What are people cooking? We're gonna see Frex and Crusader here. Frex and Crusader. Oh my God! Oh I've, my God! I've seen this card before, and I seen this Wait, card before it, way back then. Wait, it's a black version of uh of yeah, it's the black version of Sanctifier. Yeah, of Sanctifier and Vex. Yeah, it also has Infect. But also, we have Flage attacking here, going down the three here on Andy, and because we're exalted, the <laughs> we exalted the Arena Glory, so we're down the three here. How? Flake get two minus one minus. <laughs> I don't think it matters because either you declare the you just need to declare the attack, and then yeah, that's game. That, does Andy have removal with this? Andy fight? needs a. Andy has to push here. We do have a. We do have a polluted to deal with this. 
Oh, but, the hand was all Phyrexian Crusader. More Phyrexian Crusader in the hand here. So Max Walter is going through it now and guaranteed his top eight spot. Yeah, Phyrexian Crusader was cool. But it wasn't quite enough. Yeah, the the Frex 